Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Uh, today we're going to be going through like different stocks and terminology. We haven't deep dived into this a lot, so we just want to give you guys some kind of educational resources to look into. Uh, Kirby's going to pull up, uh, he's going to share his screen and show us different uh, things to be looking at when you're looking up a company's stock. So, yeah, I mean, the reason why uh, I think this is a good topic, Alex, because I was out last last night just, you know, talking, mingling with people. You know, I'm a people's person. You know, everybody loves me. No, they don't. <laughs> but no, but the, that was the kind of thing that uh, everybody was, they made it sound more complicated than it was. You know, they asked him what platform to be on, what did this mean? And I explained to him that investing in the stock market itself it's easy. It's a low barrier to entry to get into the stock market. That's why it's very few that's very successful in the stock market because the barrier to entry is so low. I mean, what I mean by barrier to entry is anybody can go open up a Robinhood account and start trading and then they can get on you know, YouTube and say they're expert and they uh, hot stocks or all this other stuff. Um, but and then I'm just explaining to them, like the reason why they make it sound complicated is because. And even if you you know look on CNBC, it sounds complicated. You know, it sounds more than you know the twelfth grade education. You need more than a you know twelve year education of high school to accomplish what they're talking about. But the truth of the matter is, if you can get past the eighth grade, if you pass the eighth grade and you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, uh, you can you can do pretty well in the stock market or investing in any asset class in general. If you do the work, but it's more of the terminology to get get people scared. So here I'm just gonna break down some terminology of just a random stock that we just found on the CNBC website. So I'm gonna hit the share screen button here and just break down something. But before I do that, Alex, do you got anything about that? You hear about people talking to you saying, "Hey, what does this mean? What does that mean?" Yeah, yeah, I get that a lot. A lot of people they don't realize like you can just pull this information up and then just like. Right. A lot of people don't understand like, oh, well, how, how do you do the homework? And I know when I first started investing, I had no idea. And you just sent me like Yahoo Finance, CNBC, as we're about to pull up a bunch of different things. And it'll show you every detail, every stat about the company. All right. Well, I'm just going to run through it. But stop me if I need to break down something further and go from there. But we're going to hit the share screen feature. We're going to pull this up here. Let me know when you can see my screen. All right, I can see it. All right, cool. Well, so this is regular CNBC. CNBC, that's used, that's like the financial juggernaut, financial news channel. Uh, I don't know what channel it is on all the local news stations, but just look up CNBC. It's all finance all the time. Uh, but this is the website, CNBC.com. I just put up a random stock, and random stock, this is Altria. The only reason why I put up Altria because this probably had more things filled out. So... Just going down the line, just so you can understand what what everything is saying. So right here, after after hours, after hours is the stock market is open from nine thirty Eastern, nine thirty in the morning Eastern, through four p.m. Eastern. That is the normal trading hours. Can you can you trade pre market? Can some people uh, trade and buy stocks pre market? Yes, that's before nine thirty a.m. Can some people uh, trade stocks after the market closed, and that's after four p.m. Eastern. Yes, they can. So just looking at this right here is unchanged. Uh, no, no price change in the aftermarket after hours for Friday, 714. Jack, so that's July 14. The volume, the volume is his number of uh, shares traded hands during this time period. So right here, 129,000 shares. So this close right here, and if the market was going on, you wouldn't see the after hours period. You only see this number here and you'll see the the numbers fluctuating up and down. But this is the price. Forty five, forty nine is what what what's the price? Excuse me, that the stock closed at on July 14th, 2023. So this is. You know, forty five, forty nine. The volume was four million seven hundred and fifteen thousand four hundred eighty nine. The volume is just the number of shares traded hands. And then right here, you see the 52-week price range. This is how far the stock has moved in the last 52 weeks. So in the last 52 weeks is the last year, but based on year to date, not based on 2022, 2023. So 
it's based on just the last 52 weeks. So we're in July. So the last 52 weeks to July 2022. So the low of this stock was $40.35. The high is $48.99. Uh, and as you see right now, that the stock currently is trading at $45.49. So it's below the high, but higher than the low of the last 52 weeks. Just let you know. All right. So this here, you'll see a, a chart or something that looks like this on the CNBC website. Only thing it's giving you is the price action and letting you know where the stock price has fluctuated over a one-day period, five-day period, one month, three month, six month, year to date, as you see here. And then it goes out one year, five years, and then all time. So this, it goes all the way back. And Altria is way older than 1980, but this is how far back the calendar goes uh, on this website. So since 1980... Uh, the stock was trading at 41 cents. And then the high uh, in 2017 was $74. And then now we're at $45. So that's what that's doing over all time. But it gives you different, you know, uh, time parameters in between. So these key stats here, these key stats here, it gets a lot, it gets confusing for a lot of people. And Alex, while I was up here, you got anything about this? Or we're good to go. Uh, I just wish I could buy all three at 41 cents. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So the summary page, when you pull up a stock, then you can pull up a stock by just typing in the stock ticker symbol up here. But you'll get this information. And the only thing this is telling you is the open is what price did the stock open on the last day of trading? So open at 45.67. The high of the day is the highest the stock price got up for that day. So that's 45.68, low is 45.35 of that day. The previous close is letting you know where the stock closed on Thursday. So this is a Friday chart. So it's letting you know where it closed at on Thursday. So it closed at 45.58 and then it opened Friday at 45.67. So you see it was a movement in the pre-market of three cents. So the stock opened a little bit higher on Friday. You got anything, Alex? Nope. Oh, okay. All right, I thought you was over there doing sign language, throwing up gang signs. I didn't know what you was doing over there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, so the 10-day the uh, average volume is is the average uh, number of shares that's moved hands. So 7.80 million shares here. And then like we talked about, 52-week high, you know, it lets you know the date the 52-week high came in, the 52-week low. It lets you know the date the 52-week low came in. So beta. This is something that people have a problem with. So understand, beta of one, beta of one means that a stock is letting you know the uh, volatility of a stock. That's what beta means, the volatility of a stock. So if you have a beta of one, that means you move along with the fluctuation of the market or the volatility of the stock market. That's what a beta of one is. So if you're below one, so that's 1.00. So if you're below a one beta, that means you don't move as with much volatility as the stock market does. S and P five hundred. That's the we use as the baseline. So, so here with Altria, Altria is zero point six two. That means its beta is below one, so it's not as volatile as the stock market. And you will find that with a lot of companies that is a dividend king, aristocrat, or they pay a lot of money in dividends, they. The volatility is not as huge as you see a growth stock like an Apple or Facebook, uh, you know, or some of the other meme stocks that's out there or something like that. So that's what beta means. Remember, above one means it's more volatile than the stock market. Below one means it's less volatile. And I'm going to come back to Altria, but I just want to show you a different one. So let's go with we're going to put up pull up old Tesla here just to give you a comparison. Oh, no, that's not Tesla. Sorry. All right. So the beta of Tesla is two point. Zero eight. So that means it's one standard deviation more volatile than the stock market. And as you see, Tesla, if you look at how much it moves, it moves at bigger variances than the stock market in general. So just want to show you that there are different numbers below and above. But when it's a growth stock, usually the beta is higher than one. And then when it's a dividend stock or or something that's more of a value stock, it will be below the beta of one. So if you if you uh, can't deal with the big fluctuation of your portfolio going up and down in big numbers. You want to look for stuff that has a beta of one or below one. If you can handle that muster, you know, being in the 
you know, high flying stocks and you can watch it move in the beta of above one is where you want to be if you can handle that movement. But that's what beta means. So going back to Altria, so we don't have this video running over, uh, running over crazy. So market cap. So we got market cap here. Market cap means the total value of the of the company. And how they come up with the total value of the company, all it is is the total number of shares outs outstanding, the total shares outstanding times the current stock price. So the current stock price is 45.49. So 45.49 times 1.79 billion gives you a market cap or valuation of 81 billion 201 million yada 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 dot 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 dollars by 81 billion dollars so that's what market caps mean the total value of the company and then if you had a company appear like apple you probably see a, a t next to it trillion well not probably you will see a t next to it it's trillion right there but shares outstanding means how many total shares outstanding is of the stock Every stock has a different total number of shares outstanding. See, so like a mature company like Altria has 1.79 billion. I'm just going to pull up another just to show the variance. So that means there's a total number of shares out there that people can buy and accumulate and hold the share. I mean to trade. But let's go to just AI or C3 AI, chat GPT. They only have 1.15 million shares outstanding. That means they have a lower float, a lower number of shares outstanding. So with this very low number of one point, I mean, 115 million, and it's a lot of investors in the market, and they look at the beta is over one because it's so uh, few numbers out there of stock that when people buy shares of this and the shares start moving, then you get big fluctuations with the beta higher than one. But that was just showing you that there's different numbers for every company out there. But the going back to Altria to try to keep it the balance, but that's what shares outstanding mean. The total number of shares out there available to be traded. All right, dividends. Dividends is is a check or a um incentive that some stocks, not all stocks, some stocks pay you for being a shareholder or owner of the company. So and not all companies do this. So like this area right here, tell you if a company pays a dividend. So uh, Altria pays $3.76 per year a share. So if you have a thousand shares, Alex, I went to public school. If you got a thousand shares and you hold the uh, stock of Altria in a year, how much money would you receive as a dividend? $376. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> I went to See, private school and I met Alex, Alex. Alex went to <laughs> private school, high paying school, <laughs> Three, high paying school. 1760, my bad. <laughs> exactly. You see, you see, all that money paid for school, he oh, gained it, but you will receive 3760 bucks yes. if you bought Altria, if you bought a thousand shares of Altria, no matter if you bought it at 41 cents back in a day or you bought a thousand shares now, you'll receive three thousand dollars. So, of course. You can see if the cheaper you bought it, the bigger the return is. And then the dividend yield. The yield is just telling you if you bought the stock right now at this price, at this price of $45.49, if you bought, bought the stock right now, the dividend yield, for most people that don't know what the dividend yield is, it's just like the interest that's in a savings account. So like you put your money in a savings account and then the bank pays you interest for putting your money in a savings account. Dividend yield is you buy a stock and then this is how much money you receive in a yield per year that you hold it. So right now, uh, unless you at if you at like when we know one of these online banks is giving you 4.5% interest in a year, that's what you'll get paid. So if you own Altria for a year, the dividend yield is 8.27. So it's double what the high yield savings accounts is doing. But again, there's other you know risk factors in there in there holding Altria. You got the fluctuation of the stock. But again, this dividend and this dividend yield comes no matter what, no matter what if the stock is up or down or indifferent. So if the stock is up and you get the yield, that's you know added incentive. If the stock is down and uh and you receive the dividend, that's just where you're at in that point. So that's the deterrent. So with more risk is more reward. So there you go. The dividend for Altria is eight point two seven. So year-to-date change, year-to-date change on the stock, meaning how far, 
how much the stock uh moved on the year is minus 0.84 percent. There we go. So where else we got? Okay, here we go. Ratios, ratios. Alex, let me know if we're running over. But um, this is gonna be quick. All right, ratios, earnings per share. That means how much do the company earn per share of each stock of 1.79 billion shares? How much do they own earn per share? So they eat, earn per share is three point uh three dollars and eleven cents per share. So the PE ratio, that's price to earning. So price to earnings mean how much you're paying. For one dollar of earnings, so you're paying fourteen. You're paying fourteen dollars and sixty-two cents for every dollar of earnings that Altria has. Four PE is a nine twelve. That's just projecting out uh, how much, based on the stock price, how much would you be paying for forward earnings? So if you're paying fourteen dollars, and then in the future, because of the stock appreciation and the return of capital, that it will only be a nine twelve. So you will be getting a better value in the future. Uh, based off of, you know, the numbers now, revenue is how much money, how much uh, revenue the company is bringing in in a year. I'll trade brings in almost $25 billion a year. Return on equity is 407%. Return on equity is how much uh, return or ROE is going back to the shareholders or investors of the company. So 407%. EBITDA, this is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation. So this is the revenue. This is the earnings before they take out taxes and yada, 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 yada. So operation expenses and all that other stuff is already taken out. So after you take out the operation expenses, it's 12,000, I mean, $12.35 billion. Then gross margin. Gross margin is, so if I have something, let's say, Alex, I have a burger. I have a burger. I It costs me $5 to make it. I sell it for $10. The gross margin is five dollars, right? But in that five dollars, in that five dollars that I make, we still gotta add in other operating expenses like salaries, electricity, yada yada yada. So before, so the gross margin is buy for. I mean, it cost me five dollars to make, ten dollars to sell. So the gross margin is fifty six point nine five percent. So after you take out all these other expenses, all these other expenses, the net margin is 22.44%, which is pretty good. Debt to equity. Debt to equity is meaning how much debt is on this company compared to the equity. As you see, it's 654%. So the debt, so the equity, where are we at? Okay, so so the, so the whatever the equity is, and I, on another video, I'll show you where that at where that is whatever the equity is on the company the debt on it is 6x times the the equity of the company and i mean we can get into why debt at at this scale doesn't matter but in some essences it does but we won't deep dive deep into that so uh, the next thing is events it usually gives you the earnings date or when the company is going to announce the earnings and the x dividend date will let you know what date you need to own the shares to get paid the dividend of 94 cents at, at each quarterly period all right guys with all that being said if you like the video the video hit the like button if you have any questions about this leave us a comment down below share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one